Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And it is August. Wow, it's August already. August 3rd. Um, and for the, the first time in a while, no EV news. All yeah. You know SUVs. what? SUVs. All well, no, well, yes, all trucks. SUVs, trucks. But let's start it off with uh the most exciting one here. It's the biggest story, I think. It definitely is. The 2023 Chevy Colorado. So, yeah. I mean, the Colorado's been around. It's kind of boring. I mean, other than the ZR2, no one really buys a Colorado because it's it's a work truck, right? A lot of yeah. it is just built as a work truck at the moment. Um, but for 2023, this is fully revamped and it looks great. Like it physically looks amazing inside and out yeah. um they still have the zr2 so you're still able to have you know if you go that can conquer everything mm-hmm. i think this is the new standard this might be the benchmark because this reminds me of all the trucks that we see overseas or like in other markets like south america whatever mm. where they don't mind their mid-sized trucks looking butch and like yeah proper because you look at a tacoma here and you look at a tundra and you're like well wow, the tacoma is really wimpy uh mm. obviously you put big enough tires lift it enough it will look cool but that yeah. that goes with anything right but the colorado um the you know the outgoing model 20 been out since 2015 seven years now uh decent truck really i i have no complaints about it. i've been driving one the last little bit a zr2 and it's it's a great truck uh i like the way it drives better than a ranger better than a tacoma and definitely better than a gladiator because just the gladiator whoa, whoa, whoa. Like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the gladiator wasn't that bad that desert model that one was actually pretty good i actually uh, really enjoyed that the, the colorado one. The, the beauty of the Colorado, the, at least the outgoing one, even the ZR2, just drives like a normal vehicle. Like, yeah. I, you don't have, you don't feel like you're, you're in like something clumsy. It's not hard to park. It's easy to see out of. It feels small. Uh, and, but it doesn't feel like floaty or ex, like too stiff or anything. I think it's like one of these like really well tuned vehicles. Uh, cause my brother has one, uh, has a ZR2 and before he had a normal, like LT, like a pretty base one. And then he, he got a ZR2 afterwards. So I've driven both, but they drive very similar, even though the, the ZR2 has that fancy suspension and I'm really liking this truck. Cause I towed with it recently to our track day uh towed our crx with a trailer and put a barbecue in the back carried a lot of stuff in it uh because my f-150 like i mentioned previously it's still out uh still in the body shop getting repairs getting a new axle and stuff so uh no update there really but i love the way this new truck looks and the beauty is you know we're looking at the press release right now and even the base model it doesn't look crappy because that's that's not easy to achieve with well manufacturers in you know north america have made it seem like it's not easy to achieve because if you look at the outgoing colorado you look at the outgoing tacoma you look at the even the gladiator the base model is kind of disgusting uh at least exterior wise uh it's almost embarrassing to drive some of these uh the ranger may be the exception i think even the base ranger looks acceptable <laughs> uh the but... ridge line come on the base ridge line looks great they're only one trim <laughs> there's three <laughs> there's three trims on the uh on the ridge line but you know what the the chloral does look good even that base trim like you mentioned that work yeah. truck trim it's actually crappy not plastic horrible. grill and it's like it looks decent like yeah it has the same face um and it's got really muscular lines like that's something that's been mm-hmm. missing from the mid-size market right it's got a flared out uh bed and it just it looks it looks awesome and it has proper sized doors now the old well no actually it looks about the same no i uh, think it's about the same the colorado always has decent rear doors yeah. the the full quad cab whatever you want to call it version yeah but um, the interior oof, that interior is a, 
it's a big upgrade. Yeah, every Colorado comes with that 11.2 or 3 inch touchscreen. Like yeah. it looks great inside. It looks okay. Maybe it doesn't look great, but at least it looks modern, right? Yeah, it like looks you, good enough because, like, it's like at the end of the day, it's it's an entry level ish truck. Yeah, that you know the base price point is very affordable for anyone who needs a truck with you know four wheel drive. Uh, and I think this interior is awesome. I think it just it it's the best in class. I would say, yeah, yeah, I would say the best in class because what else is there really to compare to? Under under like thirty five grand starting. Well, in this class, I mean, it's this or the Ranger, really, or the Gladiator. The Tacoma Frontier. Tacoma is nowhere near as good. The Frontier, yes, it's been yeah. updated, but really hasn't yeah the, the frontier r- mechanically has the ridge been... line is the same since 2016 mm-hmm. like no this is definitely no. best in class and interior. the ridge line won't be able to tow or have this much payload i i would assume uh yeah the towing the, for sure this is the towing i think it was only six thousand. yeah and max payload up to 1684 pounds so that's that's you know that's full size range yeah. ZR2 obviously not as good, uh, but actually, you know what? Speaking of ZR2, so again, I, I towed with the ZR2 recently, and even though it's rated significantly lower, the outgoing ZR2 I think is rated five thousand pounds. My trailer CRX and the stuff we put in it about four thousand pounds. Do you think? Okay, I'm at eighty percent of the towing capacity. This truck's not going to handle it. I barely noticed it was towing, and mm, that's the, good. the fuel economy showed it too because the fuel economy driving from Richmond and Mission and back got about sixteen liters per hundred k, which is like that's a forerunner on a good day. <laughs> I don't like think on I've a good se- day with nothing towing. I don't think I've it. seen sixteen on a forerunner before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it you know the beauty is like it gets uh, like 13, 12, 13 normally, which is very reasonable for this type of vehicle. I think, uh, well, know, for the full size trucks, but is the ZR2 the V6 or the, V6. the diesel? Oh, no, interesting. Diesel interesting. is uh, not. I think you can probably get the diesel, but diesel's kind of problematic. They're not hmm. so new engine choices with the. Uh, the new model colorado only four banger turbos right Mm -hmm. across the board yeah so you got three different outputs it starts at 237 horsepower all the way up to 310 259 pound feet of torque to 430 Mm -hmm. Um, so they call it the normal turbo plus and turbo high output the, the turbo, turbo plus and the turbo high yeah oh. turbo ho. <laughs> the turbo high output it's very similar in all the design the cooling and everything um mm-hmm. whereas the base one that's actually quite different so don't think it's just a tune on that base model um it is quite different from the turbo plus and the base motor but on the turbo plus you can get um like a chip essentially installed from factory to make it a turbo oh. high output so that's actually kind of cool. Um, you got, technically, you got four trims. You got the WT, which is the work truck. The LT, which is like one up. So you get, you know, some more features and whatnot. Model. Yeah, the Trail Boss, which is the practical everyday off-road version. Um, you got the LT Z71, which is like, hey, you want all the goodies in it, but you don't really need to take it off-road all the time. So you got the LT Z71 because that only gets you out of one inch lift versus the Trail Boss two inch and the ZR2 three inch lift. So the Trail Boss, I think it's like that sweet spot in the range because it's a brand new trim, right? You had Trail Boss before for the Silverado before, but never for the Colorado. So the ZR2, sorry, the Trail Boss for the Colorado gets you a two inch lift, 32 inch AT tires with 18 inch wheels. It looks great. You got halogen headlights in the front, blacked out grill, blacked out fender flares. It's the one that can, it looks like it can take a beating and you won't hurt, you know, afterwards. It's not Um, blacked out in the sense that like you might, you know, listeners who don't see it, they might think it's a gloss black package. No, hmm. it's like matte black plastic. It's it's just plastic black, yeah. Rubber made fender flares, door handles, grill, (laughs) bumper, which is perfect. I think it's perfect in yeah. this type of truck. For, for that kind of truck, the one that you want to just go off-road and not have to worry about bashing it up, 
that's yeah. the one. And they they moved up to 32 inch tire, which is nice because I think the old one only had a 31 inch tire, mm-hmm. which was a little bit wimpy. 32 inch is almost full size truck size, which pretty nice. Well, what's nice is if you want the ZR2, that gets a three inch lift and 33 inch tires wrapped in 17 inch wheels, 10.7 inch ground clearance. That's pretty good. And of course, the ZR2, just like before, you get the electronic front and rear diff locks. So you don't have to worry about that. DSSV suspension. Yeah. Um, oh, the Trail Boss, as well as the Z71 pack, both of those come with a locking rear diff. Um, they didn't necessarily a say... or G80? They didn't necessarily say if it's a G80 or real locker. I mean, some people consider the G80 a real locker, um, but I've off-roaded in a Trail Boss and that G80 was horrible it was so unpredictable i did not like it whatsoever uh but we'll see we'll see what you know when they come up with it maybe i'll be able to take one off road and have some fun with it but yeah. it's it's a super far departure from where it used to be mm-hmm. well and so the high output version 310 horsepower 430 foot pounds of torque mm-hmm. horsepower similar to the old model really good power out of the old colorado even with the v6 even seven years ago that thing was so ahead of its time if you think about where the tacoma was where the frontier was there was no ranger there was no gladiator but the the colorado drivetrain wise i think was so far ahead and that's what really pushed the last generation to pretty good you know popularity and success i think the previous generation the first gen with a five cylinder that was a bit of a flop. Like people, a few people bought it because it was cheap and you can get them, you know. Yeah, in those, it, it was more like, of like a fleet truck. Yeah, as a fleet truck, it was okay. But as something you would actually want to drive and live with every day, the second gen Colorado was a huge upgrade. And really people slept on it because it's just a Colorado. Like people don't well, really think anything of. We, we also have to thank that first gen Colorado because it, kind of morphed into one of our favorite trucks, the H3. H3 Alpha. <laughs> yeah, without the Colorado first gen, there would not be an H3. <laughs> which, which you know, I'll leave it up to you guys, the listeners, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, looks like it's got a Goodyear Wrangler across the board for tires. Uh, it might be the new territory. It looks like it is the territory. It is. So the, the Trail Boss gets the territory uh, ATs, whereas the ZR2 gets the territory MT. Ah, uh, okay. That's why the sidewall looks really aggressive on yeah. the ZR2. Uh, ZR2, again, got that really aggressive cut bumper uh, that you just, I love how that looks because it's, it's terrible for aerodynamics, but it's amazing for off roading and just yeah. makes the truck look badass. Uh, not going to be a cheap truck by any means, but really fast, right? Like 430 foot pounds in a mid-sized truck. That's going to be, that's going to be really quick. Well, something that's good about the new Colorado is because they actually moved the wheelbase out a little bit, Mm -hmm. that front wheel is pushed out. So you can Mm. actually get much better approach angles than you did before. It's not as good as the Gladiator because the Gladiator is basically like, you know, straight up front. But yeah. the front end of this, especially with the ZR2 with that cut bumper, it's going to mm-hmm. be really, really good. Yeah. And it's like, this is one of the few trucks you can even get a front locker on. Obviously, Gladiator, the higher trims you can. But the Gladiator, I think, you know, as far as road manners go, is is it's, yeah. a, it's a compromise. Like, you, you really struggle that, to live with it. And that solid front axle, yeah. It's, it's not a good car to... to to own i would say uh you know it's strong and it's got good articulation but most people the way people are going to use trucks the zr2 is going to ride great it's going to drive normal and it fits in normal places the gladiator feels big i don't know it feels really long it feels extremely long the wheelbase uh the colorado i've i've loved driving it because i've been driving it around richmond lately and you know we don't have the biggest parking spots i haven't been driving my f-150 um in richmond in and about richmond because like going around these like strip malls and stuff is just not fun Mm -hmm. uh in a full size but the colorado it just drives like a normal sedan even like you don't you don't feel like you're you're 
you're suffering or having a hard time navigating in something like this. Uh, and so this is getting the eight speed, right? Not a 10 speed. It is an eight speed. Yeah. Yes. Which so far I I've been loving that transmission. Like it, it, it has the right amount of ratios. If it's, it's, it's probably an improved version of what's in the outgoing model, uh, which gets good fuel economy. It, it's so smooth. It is in, incredibly smooth something uh, that i found that was kind of cool um mm -hmm. was the wheels um it's going to be a six slug six by 5.5 mm -hmm. so the same as the silverado oh, which yeah. isn't really common really um but like i saw that and i was like oh that's interesting um they put bigger brakes in it as well so you got bigger front and rear rotors compared to before i think it's like about an inch bigger mm. I wonder how big you because the ZR2 looks like it's got 17s. So how big could it be? But isn't the old one six lug? Yeah, the old one is six lug. But this is six by five point five. I think the old one uh, wasn't five point five. Okay. I don't know domestic patterns. All new trucks seem to be the same bolt pattern though. <laughs> it's at six by one thirty nine point seven. Uh, if that translates to five inch, I don't know. 139.7 and then I can't do that translation. It is 5.5. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, every truck now, this is something really nice because uh, the new Fords, I think are switching to this bull pattern. The new Tacoma is this pattern. Ram is using this bull pattern. So it's, hmm. it's going to be really good. The only thing you got to be careful with is the hub bore, but uh, it, I think it makes the aftermarket a lot more compelling because uh, a lot more fuel wheels. Yeah, a lot, a lot easier to stock and and source wheels for your truck because this is the bolt pattern to get. I think the old one might have been a one twenty bolt pattern, six by one twenty. Now that I think about it, so it's a smaller yeah. diameter. Well, um, they they did mention it in the blurb, which mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that has to be somewhat significant. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of these things. Like the whole industry is doing these, uh, I don't know if it's for cost cutting, maybe they can share rotors or stuff like that, uh, you know, among different brands. Like all the Germans have switched to five by 112. Before we had some five by 100, five by 120, five by 130. But now most of the Germans are on board with five by 112. They're like, this is the bull pattern. Might as well. Yeah. Japanese are moving towards five by 120, which is weird. <laughs> Japanese kind of always do their own thing and they they're they're kind of backwards in some yeah sense. yeah um, that doesn't make sense to me yeah, um no this is so badass i i really should consider uh, this how do you feel about the bed size five foot two inches a little shorter than some may want but i think it's still you know more than enough for a mid-sized truck mm -hmm. i mean it's they're not, not a doing six a, footer. they're not doing a long bed short cab no so from from what I can see from the blur right now, anyways, it's one cab size, one bed size, unlike the Colorado from before, where you could get that extended bed. I've never seen it's really rare to see that in the in the outgoing generation, the shorter yeah. cab option. Uh the first generation I did see some of the shorter cabs, but uh this is like this kind of crew cab is kind I of I think the, way the one go. that does like it's the same cab size, but it's just a longer bed. It had your standard bed and then you have your extended. So there was two Outgoing wheelbase, one. two wheelbases, and there's an extended bed op extended bed option. Uh huh. Yeah, which I, I thought I like I was I was thinking just like you, I was like, oh, doesn't really make sense. But they did do that. Um, because the same thing with the frontier, because I remember looking that up. Frontier has a standard short bed and yeah. a longer bed as well. Because I know uh, the outgoing Colorado had like a, a suicide door cab too. That I'm not sure. That I don't yeah. recall. I don't know if they still made it, like, but at least when it first came out, it was available as a two and a half door, the thing. double cab or whatever you want to call yeah. it. I don't know what yeah. they call it, but uh, no, I don't think it was very popular. No, I think the short cab. Short bed is okay because you can always flip it down and have more bed space. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I like the looks of this. However, if you're not a big fan of the looks of this, rejoice because the canyon's almost here. Mm -hmm. Canyon has a pretty different look. Like mm -hmm. we only seen a teaser so far, 
but it has a pretty different look, which, you know, similar to the Silverado and the Sierra. <laughs> I forgot the name for a second. <laughs> but the uh, Canyon has a pretty different face with that. Uh, I don't even know what GMC calls it. It's kind of like Lexus's spindle grill. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, but the you grill. Know the, the funny thing is Chevy does this grill, too. Like Chevy they, has models that have this. They do have a similar grill in some of their models, but not on yeah. the uh, Colorado. Yeah, I know. Oh, the ZR2 Colorado gets a flow tie. So the Chevy right. logo that is cut in the middle. Got that little extra cooling. Uh, yeah, it really doesn't do a thing, but it's cool. <laughs> it is, yeah. But the G- GMC Canyon, uh, August 11th, it's when it's going to come out. Um, the, no information on it whatsoever. The only teaser that they show is this like front end it's view. Be the AT4X. So. The AT4X, which is basically the ZR2. And you ZR2. get the ZR2 kind of bumper cutout on the bottom as well. Because you see like light bar. 60% of that front tire. Like, yeah. <laughs> the pictures of ZR2 that we saw don't have a light bar. The AT4X has a light bar and like a bull bar. Yeah. Maybe so a the, winch, but ZR2 well, actually, has ZR2 the does. fog lights in the center. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, there's this bar behind. I just don't yes. know if that's the uh, light bar or not. It kind of looks like it, but it's so hard to see in the the photos. Hmm. Let's see here. Let me do a little digging. I don't see the grill light bar on the ZR2, but I no, think this might be yeah. accessories. And- yeah. yeah. No grill light bar, but you definitely have the fog lights in the center of that loop yeah, bar in the middle. Just a great looking truck. I think this is going to really take a, a bit of market share from Toyota. It really, we really need someone to knock Toyota off their high horse because Toyota, they, it's it's such a, I, I hate the Tacoma. <laughs> like, I, I like it, it's literally like the worst in, in, you know, you know what the grossest thing about the Tacoma is that I can't get over. The it's interior? like I could, the interior, and specifically, I don't mind the dash. I don't even mind anything. It's where you grab the door. Like when you're getting out, the plastic on that door pull is the nastiest door pull you've ever felt. Like I've, I've never felt a nastier car, and you have to pull that every time you get in and out. Mm. Like that. That I can't get over. Like the the radio stuff, like that, the infotainment, you can change that out even, uh, at least with the Tacoma. Uh, but yeah, the just the doors feel so nasty on that car, <laughs> and it's like it's something that you can't avoid either. Like it's it's I a touch mind. point. Yeah, yeah, it's like I hate when journalists like reach up a foot onto the dash. Like, oh, the material up here is so cheap. Oh, the material down here, you know, in your butt crack is so cheap. But like. I, the door pull. I, I worry about what my my what my bum is on. You know that that yeah. You know that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, that is the thing with Tacoma. Not only is it terrible on gas, the transmission is so rough. It it makes no power. It can't Isn't, tow. Didn't they update the transmission when they put in the three point five? It's a six speed, but it's still so rough. Oh, like you feel every shift. And I got in the Colorado. I'm like, I can't tell it's shifting. I, I don't know what to do. Like I can't tell. <laughs> I can't even tell it's running. Like it's, because you don't hear that loud fan noise. It's a CVT. <laughs> yeah, it almost it's almost as smooth as like the Colorado. Like seriously, if I don't think anyone who buys a Tacoma actually cross shops. They just oh no his, no. Oh, it has resale value. That's yeah, why they, I bought it. Like they they see on YouTube is like oh man, my favorite YouTuber that goes overlanding has a Tacoma. Yeah, it's reliable. That's what I want. It has accessories. It it is. Yeah. It has great resale value, and that's it. Like, yeah, it's. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. But Tacoma let's move is on. A terrible car. <laughs> let's move on to something. Maybe not terrible. Not this is this is great. This is a yeah. great truck, and it's the Maverick Tremor. So the Tremor is a brand new name. To well, not a brand new name. It's a relatively new name to Ford. They had the Tremors mm-hmm. on the uh, F-150 first, and then they put it on the Ranger. What it is is kind of like one upping the FX4 before mm-hmm. you go full hardcore into like the Raptors. Raptors. Uh, but the Tremor for the little Maverick, 
you know, super cool because this unneptanium type vehicle and then putting just a, this a cooler package on top. I absolutely love it. Um, it actually, actually gets a lift now. <laughs> yes. You, you get a one inch lift. I know it's not a lot, but come on. It's a for a unibody crossover base vehicle. One inch is actually like a solid amount. Yeah. And because I'm you... sure if they put in like two inches, you know, you're going to lose all your down travel and like they got to re engineer it. Yeah. And then yeah. the shocks, like, it's, yeah, it does get new shocks and springs, but I think uh, articulation-wise, you're probably not gaining that much with the one inch. You might be losing some down travel, gaining some up mm -hmm. travel, but it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, if they lift it two inches, they yeah. probably have to like warranty axles like every yeah, year. Exactly. <laughs> so the one well, inch. And, is well, that's a nice thing that you mentioned too. Is it gets new axles. <laughs> Oh, new transmission, heavy duty transmission, upgraded half shafts. Oh, nice. So that's so they actually took it pretty seriously. Which you know what? For the thirty four hundred, they charge for this. I think it's pretty reasonable. Oh, that's uh, not bad at all. It's it's really not because you're getting the trick diff out of the Bronco Sport. So you got kind of the dual clutch differential. It can send power wherever it needs it, and you can lock it. You can center lock it. It's not a real locker like a transfer case, but. You can center lock it and rear diff lock, which is more than well. It has no real competitors, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as crossovers go, this is like insane to have this much. Like I, I look at this as a crossover because I think it is. Uh, That's the a type very, of person. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just. Yeah, it's more of a. If you're shopping like maybe the Bronco, mm -hmm. but you're like ah, you know what? Sometimes I do need truck things. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes just having the bed is nice because, like, we had a greasy barbecue in, in ours and I had to move uh, for our track day. We had to uh, recycle a bunch of cans and bottles and, you know, stuff spills out. You don't want that in the back of your SUV, mm -hmm. right? Like, even if there's no carpet, it's still a hassle. Uh, whereas something like this, you know, you just hose it out afterwards, spill oil, spill grease, spill soda in it doesn't matter that's the mm -hmm. nice thing about a truck it's it's not a lot of room it's not a very long bed but it's it's meant to do truck things you move dirt you move wood and it all leaves crap behind that you don't want to deal with and you want it to be easy to maintain um but yeah going on about this tremor package uh so yeah we get the trick diff we got trick software so we've got kind of an off-road cruise control they call it trail control we don't have the full-size Broncos, what, turn, turn assist feature, which I don't think is really necessary. No, it's, small. it's such a small truck anyway, so you don't need yeah. that. And the cool thing is, you know, you're getting 235, 65, 17, which is a decent crossover tire size, but you're getting a full Wild Peak AT3W, not the AT Trails, the, AT, the full-on, you know, all-terrain tire that you would find on, you know, your typical mid-size or full-size truck. Uh, obviously, this is like the passenger variant, so it won't kill your fuel economy, but it's a really good tire, uh, and it's going to give it legitimate off-road chops. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting drivetrain upgrades, suspension upgrades, a little bit of a body upgrade because the, the front bumper has been revised for a little bit more approach angle, skid plates, uh, good recovery points in orange. Um, I wonder if it actually has, like, like actual metal skid plates. That I'm curious about. I feel like if they're going to call it a tremor, it must. It, it needs to it have some underbody. It might not be like huge, but <laughs> because if you think about it, it, it's got an inline four engine. It's not much to, you know, packaging wise, it should be easy to protect that. Yeah. Because uh, it's sideways. Uh, it's just, yeah, and it's, you know, got a trans axle kind of setup, I would assume. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of, Kind of nice. Speaking of engine, only one engine option for this. You cannot yeah. get the hybrid, unfortunately. It's the Same two-liter turbo. Normal yeah. Maverick. So the Maverick, anytime you get four-wheel drive, you have to get the uh, uh, the two-liter turbo. Which, you know, I mean, I, I had the hybrid for a week. I loved it, but I can understand why mm. the, the two-liter turbo is the one that you would want in those yeah. off-road scenarios. And it, it wouldn't it wouldn't really make sense to because you want the that differential 
out of the Broncos sport. Like if, and you know what, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. I think you could probably lift a smidge more slap on some thirties or 31s and this thing would be nuts. It'd be great kind of do everything type of vehicle. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's got an okay amount of cabin space. It's not, it's not bad not actually too precious with it. Um, for me, it's a little bit small, but I think there are people that who were considering overlining crossovers, but this just does a little bit better because it. Well, I mean, yeah. if you're overlining a crossover, like most people get one of those roof pop up tents, mm-hmm. and putting a pop up tent on the back of a bed is technically a little bit safer because you don't have to go that high up and it's a lot easier for you to manage as well because it's not all the way up there and you know from your day to day you don't have to think about oh right i have a rooftop temple on the top i can't go to mall parking lots because how like how many people do we know that have rooftop tents don't bother taking them off because they're can't just they're just so yeah. heavy to to take them off yourself that you can't go out you have to buy another car like <laughs> Yeah, this is the the one trick pony, really, right? You take this. It, it can be everything. a lot of things to a lot of people, uh, and I think the Maverick is getting some love. Like I, I see people, you know, I was skeptical at first because I think like people would not receive this type of car well because it's it's kind of like I don't know. It was targeted as like a more feminine vehicle, hmm. and so I get that some people would look down on it and just you know it's like owning a chihuahua or something like that (laughs) but the 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 maverick you know i think people understand you know this is meant to do something else and it's really the only option in this segment it's kind of one segment car uh but the tremor does just make it so much cooler and it's not very expensive you can get also a tremor appearance package which i think you should skip because you're just getting a gray roof uh graphics on the side gray mirror caps like for two grand that package not really worth it but for 3400 uh even if you're not seriously off-roading it it's still cool to have this package Mm because it looks better it's got orange accents everywhere it's got cooler wheels and tires just overall i think that tremor is not half bad for what they're charging well and it's more more noticeable than than like the the full-size trucks <laughs> something that i found that was kind of cool was the tremor packets available on xlt as well as area trim is that mm-hmm. true yes that's both, great both models that's great like for yeah. some people it's like you, you may not want the area you might not want the leather seats that's on the inside you know, mm-hmm. you might not want all those other things that the Lariat trim comes with. You can step down to XLT at the Tremor package and get a more reasonably priced um, version of the of the Maverick. And that, to mm-hmm. me, that just sounds like a better deal. Yeah, the XLT is very practical. For me, I think that the deal breaker was no keyless, if I remember. Mm-hmm. I yeah, don't. that's true. The, yeah, uh, that X- to me is like the 2022... <laughs> I can't buy a new car that doesn't have keys. Yeah, the, the XLT Maverick that I had had no keyless. I had a switchblade key that I had to lock and unlock. I let my wife drive it, and she was like, how do you start it? I was like, well, <laughs> let me show you this thing called a key. <laughs> yeah, but it's just kind of ridiculous. My F-150 has a key, uh, which, you know, I'm okay with, given what how old the truck is and what I paid for it, but... Uh, in 2022, if I'm buying a new truck, I better be seeing that key. And that's one thing that uh, Jeep does well is they they let you option it even on the lower trims. Mm. Toyota does it pretty well. They 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 kind of push the smart key on most of their. Toyota tracks. doesn't put smart key in like their Foreigner like last year or something. Foreigner because the Foreigner is the car that is terrible and they don't care about. Like it sells itself. I'm so. pretty sure they did the same thing with the Tacoma as well. Tacoma, the new generation, like the current generation, yeah, they most trims have it. Okay, I haven't seen too many without it. I think only like the base, like SR5, doesn't have it. But like if you go TRD off road and up, they all have it. Mm. Uh, any, yeah, but 
most of their cars, like same with the RAV4, only the LE model doesn't have the smart key. Which honestly, if you just made every car with it, it'll probably be cheaper than to have like they're two different keys, yeah. two different sets of door handles and stuff like that. It, which it, it just makes be. sense. Yeah. <laughs> it can't cost much, but it does make a big difference as far as owning a car and living with it day to day. Yeah, for sure. Let's move over to the last topic. The last, last topic news of today. story of this week. Because so this is like targeting kind of more traditional crossover buyer, which is the Mazda CX-50, uh, which we know about the CX-50. We've seen the CX-50, but it's the Meridian edition, which we also knew about because the deal, even the dealers were talking about this uh, before. And yeah, when they initially announced it, they were talking all about this as well. So like everyone knew about it, but we mm-hmm. just get full just details now. Confirm details, yeah. It's so, it's not too much more than the base. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So the Meridian is the off-road package that you add on on top of the top trim. Um, in the US, it's 2,800. Off-road in Can- package. <laughs> yeah, off-road. Quotes. Um, in Canada, it's $2,500 more. Um, what you get is... Not much, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. You're not getting much for 2,500, but I think it's it's still about what it's worth. So it's definitely not as good of a deal as that trimmer. Let me tell you that. That's for sure. Mm. Um, so there's two color options for the Meridian. You can either get it in the Zycorn Sand, which is like the green sandy beige that you see all CX-50 in, uh, or the polymetal gray, which is a really, really beautiful gray that you can get. Um, The interior is always going to be that terracotta brown interior, which is a great interior color. No problems Mm. with that. Um, The upgrades are, or downgrade, depending on how you think about it, an 18-inch wheel with Falcon AT tires in 225-60 Um. Oh, I see that you put in the AT3Ws don't come in this size. Yeah, so like we talked about just now with the Maverick Tremor, uh, that has the full size or the the big daddy AT3W, which is kind of like a gold standard all-terrain tire. This is getting the AT Trails, which is more of a everyday kind of tire with a cool looking sidewall, a little bit more off-road chops than your standard all-season tire but nothing too amazing. Uh, one thing I should mention that, you know, about these AT tires, so even though they're just the trails, they're not really hardcore off-road tire. For Canadians, if you think about it, you're getting an all-weather tire with this. So it saves you the hassle of buying snow tires, owning two sets of tires. Out of the box, you have snow tires rather than just a basic M- M&S, you know, all-season tire. So I think that is something worth noting, uh, just, you know, being in a tire business. But uh, the they're not a very impressive off-road tire, but it looks cool. And I don't think anyone's realistically taking this thing too, too, too off-roady because um, you, you look at it and it's got... It's a small size. It's a 225-60-18. This is just a standard, like, Forester RAV4 stock size 28 and a half inch tire. It's not a, it's not a real, like, off-road size, and it doesn't look like there's room to, to run much more tire. I no. look at the fender, and the, the cutout just doesn't seem like it's that accommodating. No, and I think really this isn't. is, like, this is kind of Mazda's packaging you know they're just not great at it you just never get a lot of room for your money or a lot of room for your footprint i should say it's not not for your money uh because yeah it's got big fender flares and at the end of the day it just doesn't get you anywhere yeah Uh, yeah so let me just go back here so the 2500 canadian that you get 18 inch wheels and tires you also get different headlight surrounds. They're blacked out. Um, you get different rocker panels, and there's that graphic that's on the hood. So it's this blacked out spot on the hood, so it's less reflective. Jeeps do it. And that's really all you get for the 2500 Now, like you said, you're in the tire business. I mean, can you price out what that would look like, roughly? Like uh, I mean, a set of wheels with those tires. Are we looking around 2500 yeah, 
realistically oem quality will entire yeah uh i could see that but okay not, so uh, that's why like so that's where i'm kind of struggling here like generally speaking when you add on packages from an oem manufacturer it's like you it's generally less than going with an aftermarket just because like you're they have bulk buying power right and of course it's a package on top you're not getting the standard 20s and 18s if you go down the aftermarket route you have the 20s and you can get the 18s right so you have um that as an option mm -hmm. this you, you lose that you just get the 18s which is kind of weird um but you can say your car is a Meridian. That could help with your resale what, value as well. What else does this Meridian package really? Come That's from? really it. I mean, I the, the engine's the same. It. The tra the uh, off road modes are exact same. You have that optional Apex package if you want, uh, which adds on the roof rack crossbars, a roof platform, which is basically a rack, uh, splash guards, and a different hood graphic, which. I don't know how much more different it can get. And that's for additional $1,235 um, US, but 49250 minus 47850, it is 1400 Canadian. So like, do you really need all that? I mean, it's, it's not like it's a lot, but you're still paying like for like comparing that to a CX-50 Turbo, it's almost $4,000 more for this Meridian pack and the Apex pack. I don't know. To me, it might not be so worth it. I would maybe just stick with the CX-50 GT Turbo. That's $45,000 well, Canadian. And, and then I'll just, just get some... The, the aforementioned cars, right? We talk about the Maverick Tremor. For three grand, you're getting a lot of off-road capability added on top of the regular, be it an XLT or an FX4. And you know, same with the Colorado. You look at the the Trail Boss. You look at the the Z71, and these are legitimate off-roady upgrades. The the Meridian just feels lazy. It, you know, they're, they're talking about how it stands out, how unique it is, and it, it's just for show. And I think it stands out in a Mazda people... showroom. I think that's more like what they're saying. Well, and they'll slap six grand of you know dealer added accessories on it. They'll, they'll put a bike rack on it. They'll, they'll put a kayak on top of it and stuff like that. And it will look it will look kind of cool. But I don't know if if you're really fooling anyone, you know, with this with this uh, SUV. And that was a whole, the whole CX fifty as a concept. It kind of didn't make sense but it looks cool like it's a good looking it's a handsome crossover well i actually just picked up the cx50 and i must say it drives so so good like the way that it handles on the road five? i or think it's exactly better than the same <laughs> i think it's actually a little bit better than the cx5 i can't imagine there being many real differences i i just mechanically. the cx5 feels a little bit more top heavy I mean, if you look at it in terms of like the overall size, the CX-50 is squished down. It's wider, whereas the CX-5, it is higher up. It just feels like it's a little bit more planted. I mean, I only driven it for like two days, so I can't really 100% say. I'll be able to, you know, take it for a little bit more of an adventure this weekend and really say exactly how it is. But I just think like, you know, at the price that it is, the Meridian... Without that Apex pack at 47000 it is a lot because um, the RAV4 TRD trail, whatever it's called, with that TRD off-road package, it's 44000 mm -hmm. right? It's so like, still a lot cheaper. It's quite a bit cheaper. Yes, the, the RAV4 doesn't have as much power as a CX-50. The interior isn't as nice, but... It's you know it has a TRD off road badge and on the rear. And it's a Toyota, so you get it back with reliability, with not falling apart after five years, without and the, the rust value. issues, without the rust <laughs> and build quality issues. The rust issues has been addressed. None really like 2010 and newer Mazda products are much better. 
2015, maybe. Okay, but maybe even the new a... stuff. I showed you that brand new Mazda 3 with surface rust on it. Like, yeah, that's maybe more than... that's maybe a one off. Yeah, <laughs> my it's, brother, it's... my brother in law's Mazda 3 or Speed 3, barely any rust on it. His is the exception. <laughs> like most Mazda 3 of his generation are disgusting underneath. Like, well, the. F- the first gen Mazda 3 was much worse, but yeah. Yeah, they're all, they've all <laughs> fallen apart. But it's generally like Mazda got to cut costs somewhere. So, anyway. yeah, I feel like they're getting better though. You know, 20, yeah. around 2015, 2016 and up, I feel like they're getting a lot better. But yeah. yeah. What and else is comparable with the CX50? That's really it. It's really the RAV4. The yeah, Forester, mm-hmm. Forester, uh, Wilderness. Oh, Wilderness. Yeah, how yeah. much is they're, one of those? There again, it's cheaper. It's definitely cheaper. Oh, and the Forester Wilderness, you get the uh, marginally uh, better engine. You get the you don't uh, get the turbo. You t- get the the bigger. No, you Wilderness gets the turbo. Oh wait, okay. in the Wilderness, is... no, that's right, Forester. You don't get the turbo at all. Only the Outback. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, Wilderness is the... thirty nine thousand. Oh, I keep I keep forgetting that the Forester doesn't get the uh, the good engine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Darn! So it's got the capability, but it's ten grand cheaper than the Meridian. So you can kind of cut it some slack. Outback is forty two thousand. That's a bigger vehicle. That's a bigger vehicle. Good power. Uh, it's a Subaru. Symmetrical all wheel drive. Yeah, so it's it's a lot more capable. Despite being huge, the wilderness has freaking. I remember we had one in the shop. We did a, a, a what should we call it? Block heater install. Because hmm. the customer is taking their outback wilderness up north, uh, like to the Yukon or something. So they need a block heater. And that car's got diff skids. I'm like, they're serious about this. And then you see Mazda here with their Meridian package. You're like, you're calling this an off road package, really? Like, it's really hard to take you seriously right now. Who knows? Maybe they're not putting in the press release. Underneath, they have skid plates. I they probably know. not. There's no I, way. There's, there's I'm gonna, no free. I'm going to check that CX50 that I have downstairs. I want to see if it has anything underneath. Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> my, my, my Miata has a skid plate, kind of. It's got a metal <laughs> oil pen oh. that has, for some reason, has like 10 bolts holding it on. Like, it's. It's very hardcore, but I think because of the low car, they they don't want you destroying your oil pan. So mm. it's kind of a skid plate in that sense. But uh, no, the all the CX fives and stuff that come in the shop, they all got plastic under trays. Makes uh, sense. I don't expect the CX fifty being any different. <laughs> no, totally makes sense. And that's really it for this week. Anything else you want to go over? Uh, let's talk about the GRA six drama, just because it's oh. been in the right. news a lot uh, at least among our track and enthusiast circles it's it's kind of important because uh if you're not aware the gra6 drama and i guess i guess it would extend to the brz although we should heard about it much. same factory right uh i'll just make it quick is that they're they're having issues with oil their oil pickup because there's basically rtv uh the the sealant the there's gray sealant clogging up their pickups and causing oil starvation blowing engines basically you're, you're gonna need a new engine after this uh if your car has this issue now that in itself is not that big of an issue it's the first model year new engine there's gonna be some kinks in manufacturing the issue is how service departments have been handling it there's one guy on social media having a lot of issues with his car uh, brought it in uh, because the engine blew up and Toyota, not Toyota, but this dealership voided his warranty and said, you're not covered because we saw that you autocrossed your car. We saw you drifting someone else's car, different color. And, and because of that, you're abusing your car and you're not warrantied. Now, that's not to say I, I want to make this clear because people are like, ah, oh, Toyota's being being assholes about this, but it's not Toyota. This is Gulf States Toyota. That's the distributor, and, and whoever the dealer is, 
working with this customer. Uh, they're like, get rid of it. But that's not Toyota USA. That's not Toyota Canada. That is just one dealer, one probably even one service advisor. Uh, that's why service advisor is really important. Uh, having a good relationship with your service department is really important if you want your warranty. Um, because they, they have a lot of flexibility, but um, yeah, it's it's rough because you're promoting, you know, you want up top, you have Toyota corporate promoting the GR86 as this track car, sports car, you know, having their GR track days, um, you know, all the marketing material, the car sliding everywhere. And it's really hypocritical when you have a dealer who is representing your brand saying, you know what, you did what they did in the marketing content, blacklisted, you're, you're done, there's no warranty. Uh, and this is an unmodified vehicle. That's something that's really important to mention. It's not like this guy boosted it, cranked up the PSI and blew his engine. It's a stock car. Uh, and the RTV issue, that's not something that you can really affect because that's something that happened at the factory level. When they put this engine together, they either put too much RTV sealant in there or something that, that caused this engine to fail. And there's been a few cases of it just with the GR86 chassis alone, uh, which two things. I, I've seen some people in, in other group chats and, and communities and they're like, oh, I was going to buy this car, but now it seems like it's a piece of crap. There's, there's three three maybe four confirmed cases out of thousands sold so really it's it's a point zero 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 something percent chance that this would actually affect you but it would still be nice to see toyota back this product because at the end of the day um this is the message you want to send and so it's really important for toyota to make this right i think because honestly i'm looking at the gr corolla and i'm like this car is going to blow up too because it's the power per horsepower is so high or not power per horse, but power per liter power to displacement ratio. There's no way that car is going to withstand a lot of abuse mm -hmm. um, because look at the type R the type R cannot, the type R hasn't really like been known for blowing up just because I think the way people drive them, but you can easily, easily max out the temp, temp gauge on a Type R. And I don't see the GR Corolla being any different because it's ultimately it's built around a Corolla platform and it's not, it's, it's putting out a lot of power for what it is. And even with the GR Yaris, we hear people in Japan overheating them. So imagine with more weight and I don't know, a lot of heat, you know, that's the issue. Like we just came back from a, really hot track day from the ridge this weekend all cars left really upset i would say like even the gd4 which is a naturally aspirated car meant for meant for this kind of stuff it was having a really hard time at 36 celsius ambient temperature uh the car was making less power it just mm. just feeling slow and with turbo cars it's usually worse and i think this is this is one of the reasons why I don't think the GR Corolla is going to flip as strongly as a lot of these speculative buyers are. You know, there's so many guys that speculate cars like the like the M4 GTS, like another speculate car, the Focus RS, the cars that people think, well, I'm going to make money on this. I'm going to put my order in. And like, like, good luck. I honestly, I I like that this is 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 going to hurt GR Corolla a bit because I, I don't I, I think people need to get off their high horse I well, think I, the same about the FL5 I'm I'm curious what you know Toyota US will say about this because I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna say something mm -hmm. they have to at this point they've been asked of, about it but they're just like we haven't we're investigating right at this point so yeah. they have to have some sort of resolution sooner or later um, and when that does come out that's gonna affect like you said that's gonna affect how their future sales will kind of go. Hopefully, yeah. you know, I mean, it's hard to be. Because it happens. <laughs> but as an owner, you have no way of knowing whether you're yeah. affected. So that's that's a scary thing, right? Because you're like, am I driving a ticking time bomb or am I not? But that alone well, is... 
it's a boxer four cylinder. It's it, it it's is. a ticking time bomb, anyways. <laughs> they, the previous one was super reliable. Like overall, yes, they've had cases like this where people blew their engine for no good reason, but in the grand scheme of things, for how many were track and autocross, they're pretty reliable. It's not bad. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whereas I STI, think... you could blow it on the street, like just driving normally, which on, yeah, on their stock tune, you could blow it up. So that's one of <laughs> one of my colleagues has a 2012 Forester, has 150,000 on it. He just got his head gasket done because yeah. that's his normal maintenance. Mm-hmm. It's not <laughs> super expensive. Though. Oh, his know. was, he uh, had warped. Oh. If yeah. you let it get too far, then yes. Yeah, it hit warped. Um, he told me uh, the mechanic that tore it apart just told him buy a new car. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right. I think that's really it for this week, though. Anything else you want to add on? No, that's we're pretty good for time. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, got some adventures coming up, but we'll talk about that in future episodes. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you next time.